Hi and welcome to Meetings and Math. You are here for section 8.3a, Volume of Spheres. Our essential question is, how do you find the volume of a sphere? Today you will need your Jaguar Jots on section 8.3, a pen or a pencil, you may find a highlighter helpful, a calculator will keep things moving along, your self-confidence, some creativity, and always bring your problem-solving skills. To begin with, we need to define what a sphere is. So a sphere we're used to as a ball, a nice, perfectly round ball, so something like this. But we have to be able to define it mathematically. So mathematically, it's when a radius of a sphere goes from the center of the sphere to every surface of the sphere. So imagine that you had a string and it went all the way around and you could twirl it and it would touch every surface on the outside of the sphere. That is what a sphere is. And a sphere has the volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So example one, find the volume of a sphere with a radius of 11 meters and round to the nearest thousandth. So I actually have it set up in, so you can see it in terms of pi and the nearest thousandths because we've been talking a lot about that. And it'd be nice just to, to have them side by side. So the first thing that you need to do, and you always do this whenever dealing with something that has a formula or something that requires you to think about parts, is you write down that formula. You free up your head for the thinking by writing down those memorizations. We want it to write down anything that we know so that we can continue to think about it and not have to recall, well, what else did I think about it? So always write down what you know. And then after you've written that down, Go ahead and write down the variables as well so that you kind of have a roadmap of what are those things that I'm looking for. So for example, right now, I know that pi is 3.14. I'm no longer having to recall it, it's written down and I can move on. The next thing that I'm looking at is that R. Well, I remember reading that in the problem. So find the volume of the sphere with a radius of 11 meters. There's that. So I'm gonna write it down so I no longer have to keep reading back in the problem. I can just go check my list of variables to go find it. And volume is left blank, but that's okay to have one blank left because that's what I'm looking for. And so now I'm gonna go and I'm going to substitute that into my formula right here. So this one's in terms of pi. So I'm gonna leave my pi as pi right here, but I am going to substitute my r in as 11. So since r is 11, I will substitute that in. So order of operations says I need to do 11 cubed first. So I do that. And then this is 1,331 over one. So when I multiply fractions, I need to do four times 1,331 and then three times one, which is three. So if I was leaving this in terms of pi, I'd be done. But it did say to the nearest thousandth. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's two ways I could continue on to the nearest thousandth. I could just actually do this and find this as a decimal and then multiply that by 3.14. Or I could start from the very beginning. So let's go ahead and start it from the very beginning and talk about one of the ways you could get there. Once you get into multiplication, there's lots of different ways you could go because multiplication, I can do it in any order. So we have some choices. But the very first thing I would do as I would write down the formula. So I have this four thirds pi r cubed again, but this time I don't want pi, I want to the nearest thousands. So I am going to replace pi with 3.14 and r with 11. And I know 11 cubed is 1,331. So I'm gonna do 1,331 and multiply it by 3.14 and I get this 4,179.34. So now I'm gonna take that number and multiply it by four. And the reason I'm avoiding this dividing by three for as long as I can is I know that anytime I divide by three, I get this long run on decimal and I just really don't wanna deal with it. So I have now 16,717.36. Now I divide it by three and I get about 5,572.453. Meters. It's not a perfect answer, but it did say to the nearest thousands. I 
have done the requirement and it's good enough. So example two, find the radius of a sphere with a volume of 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. So we're gonna start off just like we started off the last one, where we begin by writing the formula. Volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. And then we write down the variables that it is that we're looking for. And again, this helps us give us a roadmap for where we're going. So now let's go back into the problem and look at what we have been given. So it says find the radius. Well then that clues me in that my radius is not going to ever get anything in it. With a volume of, oh, they told me the volume this time, 2,304 pi. That's an interesting volume. That still has pi in it. So since this still has pi in it, I'm not going to use 3.14 right here. I'm gonna keep that as pi. That's an interesting thing to have happen. So if I see pi here, this clues me in, I wanna keep this as, as pi. Because hopefully what will happen is that when I do some division, hopefully pi over pi is one and I will be happy. So let's start substituting in what we have. The volume is this 2,304 pi from right here. And then everything else is staying the same. Remember pi is a number, so this is fine. So now that we've substituted into our formula, let's solve for the only variable that's left. And even though it looks like there's a lot of variables, there's not. Remember, pi is a number. So we are going to solve for r. That means I need to get rid of the 4 thirds and I need to get rid of the pi. But we can do this. I notice something unusual or usual. I notice something. I notice I have pi on both sides. Let's see if I can get rid of pi completely. This is pi times r. And how do I undo multiplication but with division? So if I divide by this pi right here, let's go ahead and do that. I notice then that pi divided by pi is 1. That's what I wanted to have happen there. So that I was left 4 thirds r cubed. But then look what happened here. That also became one. It's fine that that happened, but it wasn't my intended purpose. My only intended purpose was to get it away from the R cubed, but that's okay that this happened. And so now that that happened, what are we left with? Well, this side is left with four thirds R cubed, and this side is just left with the 2,304. So how do we undo multiplying by four thirds? Well, you undo multiplying by four thirds with this division by four thirds. But when you divide by a fraction, you really multiply by the reciprocal. So we're gonna multiply both sides by three fourths. And when we multiply both sides by three fourths, your three and your three become one, your four and your four become one. And then you end up with this three, three times 2304 over four. Well, I know that four goes into itself once and into 2,304, 576 times. So it's not as bad as it looks. So now I have three times 576 is equal to R cubed. Well, what's the inverse operation of cubing? That's the cube root. So we are going to take the cube root of both sides. And when I take the cube root of both sides, that's going to undo the cube. So remember, those undo each other. And then I'm left with the cube root of 3 and 576. Well, for that, we go to our factor tree. Now, I don't care what it ended up being there. Because the first thing I would do is I'd break it apart. But I am going to figure this out. So 576 is... 9 times 64, so we have the 3 and a 3 and a 3, and 64 is 8 times 8. Now, I'm really good at breaking up my 8s in one step as 2 times 2 times 2 and 2 times 2 times 2. Now, remember, this is a cube root this time, which means I'm looking for things as 3s or as triplets. 
So I have a set of triplets here and a set of triplets here. So that's a two and that's a two and a set of triplets here. So on the outside, I'm going to have three times two times two. So that means that R was equal to three times two times two. And three times two times two is 12. So that means that my radius is 12 centimeters. And this is the whole reason that we set up everything with writing out our formula first is because we can chip away at the things we know. And if you remember to use that masking, we've talked about masking in class where you cover up the things and you just do that problem, that line that you're working on right now, then you don't get so overwhelmed and go, I can't do this because you can't. I know that all of you know how to do the cube root of this number right here. I know you can do that. I know that you can divide, even though it's a weird thing, dividing by pi, I know you can divide by pi. Just chip away one line at a time. So what happens if I don't give you the full sphere? What if I only give you a hemisphere? What is a hemisphere? The hemisphere is half a sphere. Okay, not a big deal. So then just find the volume and cut in half. It's okay. So find the volume of the hemisphere with a radius of nine feet in terms of pi. So I like when things are in terms of pi because I don't have to deal with the decimal then. How are we gonna start? The same way we start everything else. We begin by writing the formula. Volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed, but we are only doing the hemisphere, so we're only going to do half of it. Write out those variables, volume, v, pi, and r. What do we have? We have the radius of nine feet, so we're gonna write in radius of nine feet. And we're going to leave pi as pi because it says to leave it in terms of pi. So substitute in what you know into that formula. And now chip away bit by bit what you know. Order of operation says do that nine cubed first. Oh, I cheated a little bit. Sorry. I got rid of the fraction if I could. I took one half of four. So one half of four made that two thirds. Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to do that first, but I knew that that wasn't going to make my exponent any different. I'll show you why in just one second. Because I broke my nine th to the th third power into nine times nine times nine. Why did I do that? Because I know three goes into nine. I know three goes into nine. I got rid of that fraction. <laughs> I know three goes into nine three times. So now I have two times three times nine times nine, which is 486 pi. There are different ways you could have gotten to this. If you did your nine to the third power and you got 729, and then you divided it by six and then you multiplied it by four, I mean, you're gonna get there. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way. I think I was just trying to do it without a calculator for as long as I could. So 486 pi feet cubed, because this is in volume. I promise you can do this. What you have to do is you have to practice, 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 and it's substituting into a formula. And so practice substituting into a formula and then just working through it bit by bit by bit. Don't let that four thirds get the better of you. It's just a fraction. You can work with fractions. So why did we take half of the volume when finding the volume of a hemisphere? Explain that to somebody. Let somebody understand why. Impart your knowledge on them. Thank you so much for joining us in the volume of spheres. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.